Welcome everyone to Easy Freezer Meals and I am just delighted that you could join me on today's episode because I'm going to share with you some hardcore freezer meal cooking tips that I don't want to sound dramatic, could possibly change your life. We're going to convert this very popular dish into a soul-satisfying, creamy steak and loaded baked potato soup. Let me show you how we did it. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our meat. This is going to take the longest, and we can have it cooking on the stove while we do everything else. I'm just going to be cutting up some sirloin steak into cubes. And as soon as I do that, on a blazing cast iron skillet with a little bit of oil, I don't want to overcrowd my pan, and I want to make sure that my steak is at room temperature. We're going to sear the meat, and what that's going to do is that's going to give us a whole other level of flavor. We're going to generously season it with some salt and pepper, and then once we're done searing the meat, we're going to transfer that into a much larger pot so that we can allow it to braise, and that's what's going to give us that really delicious, tender, kind of melt-in-your-mouth a steak experience for this steak and potato soup. I'm gonna be cooking about 100 pounds of sirloin, but this same process can be achieved in a slow cooker. And all you do is once it's seared, put a little bit of chicken stock to cover your meat, bring it to a simmer and then cover it. And this is gonna sit for about three to four hours. Basically when it's fall apart tender, it's ready. So let's get our bacon prepared. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna slice our bacon and fry it up until it's super crispy. This is gonna render the most amount of fat. So once my bacon is crispy, I'm gonna go ahead and separate the fat from the bacon and just set that to the side while we prepare the rest of our ingredients. Now through this video, I want you to remember loaded baked potato. And that's what we're gonna try to go for, right? So let's prepare the vegetables and we're just gonna dice our potatoes, celery, onions, and we're gonna grate some cheddar cheese. I just love that food processor. It's ridiculous. Okay, let me share with you the first hot tip when working with fresh cheese. Fresh cheese has a tendency to split, leaving you with a really grainy texture. We're gonna be fixing that by adding something called sodium citrate. There's a link in the description box below. This is a salt from a citric acid, and all it does is it acts as an emulsifier, binding the proteins and the fats together, keeping them from splitting. And so, as you can see, I'm gonna heat up my chicken stock, it's got sodium citrate in it, and we're gonna begin to add our freshly grated cheddar cheese. This is incredible. I never get tired of seeing this, and I'm glad you're able to see it with me. As we heat this up, and it's about on a, a medium heat, I'm just gonna continue to stir, and I know your brain is thinking of all the amazing ways you could use this particular ingredient, because it'll take any cheese you add it to that's fresh and turn it into the most velvety, creamy cheese sauce that you've ever seen. Look at that. Now we have a cheddar cheese sauce that uh, will not split, will not be grainy, and is going to be perfect. Oops. <laughs> it will be perfect in our loaded baked potato soup. So this is going to satisfy the cheese element for our baked potato. Mmm, didn't that look beautiful? Now that our cheese sauce is ready, let's set it to the side. We'll get back to that in a minute. Let's take all the bacon fat that was rendered and put it in a cooking pot. We're gonna use that bacon fat to saute our onions, celery, and potatoes. And this is gonna cook on about a medium to medium high heat until the potatoes get tender. Once your potatoes are tender, you can go ahead and add your garlic, stir that well to combine, and then come back with your seasonings. We're using simple salt, pepper, and some dried thyme. And as soon as I got that mixed well, we're gonna go ahead and lower the heat to medium, cover it, and let it cook for another five to six minutes. As soon as that's done cooking, your vegetables should be super tender. Go ahead and remove everything from that pot and put it into a bin or a large bowl because now we're gonna prepare the roux for our creamy steak and loaded baked potato soup. We're gonna start by adding some unsalted melted butter to our pot, and then we're gonna come back with some all-purpose flour. We're gonna cook this as we whisk it, for about five minutes. That's gonna cook the flour taste out of your roux. Be sure to mix it often so it doesn't burn. And after five minutes, we're gonna add some warmed milk to this roux and the reason you wanna warm it up. Now, this is a pro tip number two is because it's gonna dramatically reduce your cooking time. 
as you add the warm milk to your roux, make sure that you stir it. This is gonna incorporate everything really well and you're gonna notice that it's gonna get really thick really quick, and that's a good thing. You may wanna lower your heat to about a low as we prepare the next ingredient, and this next ingredient is the ingredient that could possibly change the way you cook freezer meals forever. Milk and cream-based soups or sauces always suffer a texture and quality loss when you freeze it and reheat it. This is the answer to fixing that. It's called xanthan gum. It's a binder that is just absolutely incredible. If you don't have some, check out the link in the description box below. Get you a little bag because a little goes a long way. How you use this is very specific. So let me show you how I use it. I've got some chicken stock in my blender. Currently it's on high and we're gonna add that xanthan gum while it's mixing. You don't wanna try to add this and mix it with a whisk or a spoon or anything like that because it almost immediately coagulates. So you need something to really agitate it. And I find a blender is hands down the easiest way to do it. We're gonna blend that for just a couple seconds, not that long, maybe five or 10 seconds. And then we're gonna take the top off and this is what our chicken stock should look like. It's gonna be thick, it's almost gonna be gelatinousy, And we're gonna add that to our roux and milk base. In all my experiments, I've found that using xanthan gum in conjunction with a flour-based roux will allow you to recreate that beautiful, silky, velvety uh, cream soup experience without suffering any loss of quality when you reheat it. So once you have all that mixed up, go ahead and add whatever chicken stock you have remaining to your mix and begin to whisk that. You're gonna whisk that for a little bit and trust me, it's gonna come together and it's gonna come together beautifully. The entire time your heat should be roughly about on a medium. Once everything's been whisked well and it looks like it's come together, go ahead and add your melted cheese. This is all that cheddar cheese that we used sodium citrate to bind it together. That's what this is. So we're gonna go ahead and put that into our soup. So now we are creating the baked potato element of our loaded baked potato soup. So we're gonna mix that well. Make sure that cheese really gets incorporated. I love the flavor of that sharp, extra sharp actually cheddar cheese. A lot of umami in that. And so, okay, once we feel like we've got that mixed up well, let's start by adding back in all of our vegetables. So everything that we took out in the beginning, we're gonna now put it right back in there. So I happen to be making about 40 gallons of this soup. And so I had a huge bin, but you may have a, you know, a large bowl. Just pour it right into your pot and stir that so that you can distribute it quite evenly. So this is now basically finished. We're just finishing up the elements of the baked potato. So once that's mixed, let's go ahead and add in our bacon, right? You should have a, a little bowl of bacon somewhere on your countertop. Take that bowl and just dump it right into your pot of soup and be sure to mix that well. And at this point, your soup should be smelling absolutely amazing. Don't forget to check your steak. If your steak is super tender, you can add that to your soup at this point as well. And then finally, my last ingredient is gonna be sour cream. So my heat has been reduced to a low to medium low. Once I add my sour cream, I'm just gonna give it a mix, give it about five minutes, and then take it off the heat. Let your soup cool after you eat a whole bunch of it, of course, and then package it up in your freezer-friendly containers. Now, normally what we do for our freezer meal business is we'll portion out our steak first. We'll add the soup to it next, and then we'll vacuum seal it. If I happen to have more soup than steak, then I'll just make a creamy potato soup that will just be without any beef. And so there we go. I end up getting two freezer meals out of this one particular one if I don't have enough steak. And But you can add your steak to your soup and just portion it up however you want. Right here, what you have is a view of one of my freezers. I've got the steak and loaded baked potato soup. And then in the small box, I ended up getting about a dozen just regular loaded baked potato soups. And now it's time to take one of these loaded baked potato soups out of the freezer. It's been three weeks. I want you to see what your soup is gonna look like when you heat it up as an easy freezer meal. We're gonna take this boilable bag and put it in some simmering water for about 15 minutes. You can heat it up any number of ways, regardless of how you heat it up. This is what it's gonna look like when you pour it into your bowl creamy, sumptuous, amazing. I'm gonna top it with cheddar cheese, chives, bacon, a little more sour cream, but trust me, none of that is necessary because each bite of this soup tastes exactly like you're eating a delicious steak and baked potato. And that's how you make steak and loaded baked potato soup as an easy freezer meal. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. And the unique ingredients that we used can be found in the description box through the links that I provided. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and don't forget to share the love of freezer meal cooking by sharing this video. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.